Welcome to the F110 Autonomous Racing Session. Here I'm going to talk to you about the community-driven effort that we are carrying out across multiple universities using the NVIDIA Jetsons to build, drive, and race autonomous cars. We have developed not only a research-based community, but also courses that are being taught across multiple universities and every year host several international racing competitions. I am Rahul Mangharam from the University of Pennsylvania, and I'll be walking you through our adventures with autonomous racing. In the past couple of years, we have developed a one-tenth scale autonomous racing car. And this is 10 times the fun of a real racing car because you can actually drive it and see it in action. These cars come with an NVIDIA Jetson. They currently use an NVIDIA Jetson NX, and they're compatible with the Nano and the AGX. And they come built with a LiDAR, uh, <clears throat> RGB depth camera, uh, electronic speed controller, and a power distribution board. These platforms are complex enough to mimic the real vehicle's driving dynamics. But at the same time, they are simple enough to be able to carry out a lot of machine learning engineering for perception, planning, and control. And what we will walk through today is how, through the F110 community, we help people build the vehicle from the mechanical aspects, from the chassis design to the electronic power board that is readily distributed to the community, to the integration of multiple sensors that are used in real world autonomous uh, vehicles, and the entire autonomous vehicle a software stack for perception, planning, and control, all implemented you know, with GPU accelerated libraries on uh, the NVIDIA Jetson. And this has enabled a lot of research across multiple institutions for the design of safe autonomous systems, secure autonomous systems, coordinating multiple vehicles, and also energy and performance efficient uh, autonomous systems. We focus on racing because with racing, the goal of balancing performance and safety is very clear. In regular driving, you want to be as safe as possible. And we do not know how to well uh, accommodate performance. And But in racing, you want to be safe enough and as fast as possible. And here we are pushing the vehicle to the limits of perception, planning, and control and when you can achieve performance at these limits, then you can achieve them for civilian driving. So what we do within the F110 community is we help people learn to build, code, and race these systems uh, from scratch. And essentially, going from a list of parts like this, within one hour, anyone can assemble the car that is ready to race. And we provide the bill of materials and easy access to all of these parts that can be sourced from multiple places. And it's easy for any person to build this car. Uh, the current designs cost between two to $3,000, the LiDAR being the most expensive part of the system. And once the vehicle is designed, it's ready to go. That is a full autonomous vehicle uh, racing stack. And uh, we walk through uh, the, the community to how, how to get started with driving the car straight and then all the way to doing advanced uh, planning and control. So for example, we start with perception where we can go from simple things like gap finding and obstacle avoidance to running slam on board in real time as the vehicle is maneuvering through complex environments. And uh, we go uh, with planning algorithms such as RRT star, uh, where the vehicle is dynamically planning its parts and doing that all in real time. Uh, we go from simple PID control and walk you through how you can then use advanced model predictive control where you're planning in a receding horizon. And this way you can actually figure out very aggressive strategies to overtake other vehicles as you are racing. And so we are really taking people from simple implementations of tried and tested approaches to more complex ones. There is an extremely large community and a growing community of universities and other commercial institutions that are part of our, of our research network. And each of these uh, universities here 
have one or more cars or are teaching the F110 course and participate in F110 racing competitions. And they're spread nationwide and also across the world. With each of the community partners, they have very clear goals in what they want to achieve in terms of research, education, and actually <clears throat> bringing in competency into their research teams in terms of building safe autonomous systems, coordinating across multiple vehicles, <clears throat> looking at energy efficient ways and power and power efficient ways for perception, planning and control, and also looking at resilient systems that are attack resilient control systems in terms of security attacks that will go beyond just informational attacks to the hardware attacks. Uh, we also have several hardware partners that can give you a ready-made vehicle uh, so if you do not want to be building that vehicle yourself. The reason we started F110 was mainly because we wanted to build a community uh, that had to look at problems from a systems perspective. For example, my research is at the intersection of these three topics, formal methods of how to build safe systems, control systems, and machine learning. But to build an autonomous system, you also need sensing and perception. You need to understand planning. You need to know how to implement these on GPU hardware accelerated systems. And you need to know how to implement the software so that it meets its deadlines and uh, is able to provide uh, guarantees for safety. You need to actually develop this in a real platform with power systems and mechatronics. Now, this is a lot of different kind of expertise that are needed to get into a really well-oiled, high-performance machine. And that's why we wanted to shift the education goal from teaching one specific topic to a more systems perspective. So if you have to solve a problem, then you need to know which kind of knobs you need to tweak across these different domains. But we don't want the system to be too overwhelming at the same time. And that's why we focus on the simple design that we have here. So, the initial project started with our team at University of Pennsylvania, Oregon State, and Clemson University. Uh, and we have partners uh, uh, in University of Virginia in Italy and uh, as part of our growing network. And of course, you can see our partners in Italy. They're very proud of their autonomous Maserati. But at the same time, they're even more proud of the F-110, which they can crash. And our alumni of students that have helped develop this and participate in F110 have gone on to get jobs in extremely uh, well reputed places for building autonomous and electric vehicles. And our goal is to get you, know, you involved in this community and introduce you to this very exciting world of autonomous racing. We also host several international competitions every year and uh, for example, we've had competitions from Pittsburgh to Seoul to Portugal to Italy as part of you know, popular ACM and IEEE uh, conferences. Uh, this year, we actually shifted to online racing, and we are very successful in having several teams participate, both as part of the IFAC World Congress Controls Conference and now coming up with the IROS uh, Robotics Conference. Here you can see an example of how the vehicles are racing and a lot of people viewing these races. Uh, and as these cars are racing through, they're doing you know, time trial laps, they're doing head-to-head -head racing, uh, they're using their LiDARs, depth cameras. Here we can see even human versus AI racing. And of course the AI is much more steady and persistent compared to the human that crashes more often. Um, these students are really focused on how to actually go across the entire stack of perception planning and control and really to build you know the best autonomous driver so as we started the virtual racing competitions uh, in 2020 uh, we have benchmarks for you know a single vehicle racing so basically coming up with your optimal racing lines and figuring out what are your optimal speeds as you race along these, then navigating with static and dynamic obstacles and doing you know, online kind of dynamic planning, and then doing multi-agent racing over here. So racing other, against other cars 
and coming up with your racing strategies both offline and online uh, and so that you can win the race. So we've also built a suite of different simulators. So there are software in the sim loop simulators which have full vehicle dynamics and they run the same code that you would actually run in the car. So that makes development very easy. In the courses we've taught, students typically spend about 80% of the time in the software in the loop simulator and then directly port the code to run it in the real world. We have a deterministic uh, AWS uh, cloud-based simulators that interface with OpenAI Gym so that you can use a lot of different machine learning techniques, both for training and for inferencing. We also have um, photorealistic uh, simulators built in Unreal Engine, and that's really good for vision-based, you know, uh, vision-based research with autonomous racing here. And so, for example, in the recent race, we had you know qualifying rounds where uh, teams would submit their racing agents, and then we would race them across different track layouts to see whether they qualify in the heats, just like in Formula One racing. And then we see when we have teams basically go through a ladder and they are racing against each other. Here, this is slowed down to show you that you know there is the Italian team from University of Modena of uh, just overtaking the Vanderbilt team at this point and uh, pro progressing to the next stage of the, the competition. The, in, for every race, we release a race schedule several months in advance so teams can get planning and can get started with both the virtual racing and with the real racing components. Uh, as part of our course and uh, curriculum development, we have developed a entirely open source course, which we share with the public uh, completely. And here the idea is that this course can walk anyone from the basics of building autonomous uh, vehicles and autonomous systems to the most advanced concepts. And essentially, this course has no exams. And essentially, the exams are replaced by races. But as you learn, then you compete. And then you go on from in the first six weeks, race one, the next within 10 weeks, race two, and then you have a final Grand Prix. And several universities have adapted this course and have adjusted the course material to suit you know, both the talents and what they want to gain from it for their own institutions. And we're very happy to work with anyone to use this course. It is totally free and all the material is available. So let's see how this course actually runs through, right? We start with the basics, where we're really looking at an introduction to the ROS simulator, the F110 platform, uh, and just getting started with putting together the sensors and using them uh, to understand the basics of controlling the vehicle. So first, you need to know how to build a safe vehicle, how to do automatic emergency braking, how to detect obstacles, and how to come to a stop, how to know how to compute time to collision, and then do that. Uh, this is very important because we have to take care of you know, false positives and false negatives as we are racing along. And once the students have understood how to actually do this in building a safe vehicle that does not you know, intentionally crash, then we can go to the next lab. And so the development always begins with the F110 simulator, which is a very lightweight simulator that captures you know, the car motions, the collisions. It publishes laser scans and odometry data, just like the real vehicle would. And this allows people to develop you know, the entire racing stack and is an excellent way of doing rapid prototyping of racing algorithms. And the, the design of this simulator is very simple. It allows both manual control of the vehicle and different you know, behavioral controllers to interface with the vehicle and the sensor inputs. And the simulator also runs right out of the box from a Docker. So it's very easy to quickly get it up and running to evaluate it and to start coding within the simulator. So there's no complication, no mess in getting that started. Then we switch to mechanical uh, concepts of you know, pose representation and transformations, because as you have different components on the vehicles, you need to know how to compute rigid body transforms and do that within ROS. And uh, this is exactly what you would do with a real car in terms of you know, where your cameras are placed, your LIDARs are placed, and to get the right frame of references. So for example, when you have a local frame of reference, 
on the, the right image over here, uh, on the left image over here. We also want to capture this in terms of a global frame of reference and how to do this sort of extraction of this information both on the vehicle and within ROS is really important to get started. Then we start to tune the vehicle and run the electronic speed controller tuning algorithms for PID control and for motion control. This gives everyone a very good hands-on feel of how you know, the motor controllers are able to now you know, manage acceleration and, uh, uh, and, and velocity uh, goal targets. And so now that the vehicle is ready to move and it's not ready to crash, uh, we move on to reactive methods, which is basically saying, how would you now you know, do anything but without a map? Okay, so how would you do obstacle avoidance without a map? How would you race without a map? So we start with really simple things like wall following. You're following, say, the left wall over here, and then you're racing. And you can see that this vehicle over here is slightly tentative, and it's just using simple PID control and being able to achieve that. And so this allows us to introduce the basics of PID uh, gain tuning, uh, to, uh, but within the context of you know, manipulating your vehicle over here. Um, then we look at obstacle avoidance and simple algorithms on you know, how do you actually dynamically uh, avoid obstacles, yeah. uh, but without using a map in this case. And uh, uh, students would develop these algorithms first in the simulator where we can introduce multiple obstacles and dynamic obstacles. And once we know that it works in the simulation, then they are ready to go and work with the real vehicle. Uh, we introduce different heuristics on how to do obstacle avoidance when you do not know uh, a priori where the obstacles would be, and but to have very smooth maneuvers as you do that. And now within the first six weeks, uh, the students are ready to race that car. And this is using like these kind of reactive non-map based methods to race. And you can see the car yeah, can actually race quite aggressively. And, uh, and it does go through some crashes as you're trying to push it to the limits, but hey, that's, that's part of the racing game, right? Um, then we switch to map-based methods and uh, where we look at mapping and localization, but we start really with the basics of what is really under the hood with you know, uh, localization algorithms. And we analyze the scan matching algorithms like such as iterative closest point algorithm and they are implemented from uh, reading a paper. So we explain what the algorithms are <coughs> in terms of how to localize where your vehicle is from where it was previously. And uh, we look at uh, you know, uh, uh, papers that do efficient implementations of these algorithms. And then the students actually you know, implement in code what is actually from equations. So you get an experience of how do you take research and convert that into something that is actively and practically working on your platform. And once they learn how to do that, then we also introduce them to more you know, professional and high performance you know, SLAM algorithms for simultaneous localization and mapping like the cartographer. And they get to actually use that out of the box where it builds a map uh, of the racetrack as they're racing through that. And then they can start to use you know, map-based methods. They also implement uh, and use a particle filter to localize the vehicle now that given a map and where you have captured the environment, the particle filter will localize where this car is in the world and what is the pose of this car at any point in time. And, and then the simplest you know, planning algorithm that a vehicle can do now that it knows where it is in the world is to basically follow a virtual line and use algorithms like Pure Pursuit, which is basically a waypoint tracker. And here you can see that running in the simulator. And that now starts to run in the real car once it works in the simulator. Here you can see that the car is moving much more faster than you know, the reactive methods. And also, it's much more confident in the maneuvers that it's making. And of course, gives most of our students a pretty good workout at 2 o'clock in the morning. So this is how we keep fit with F110. And so we walk them through the math of doing pure pursuit in terms of how do you realize this through splines and how do you have smooth maneuvers. And, uh, and then that comes to us, brings us to week 10, where we are now you know, doing map-based uh, 
using map-based methods for racing. And uh, this is an example of now how the vehicle is way more faster and way more aggressive to doing that, right? And this is also an example from one of the races that we had as part of Cyber Physical Systems Week in 2018. Then going further down, you know, with planning, we, we take a short break to look at moral decision making and the ethics in terms of implementing behavioral controllers and you know different rule-based systems for autonomous vehicles to decide how to make them safe and what are the kind of ethical conundrums with that. Um, then we look at you know motion planning back on the technical side, such as implementing RRT, the uh, planning algorithm, both in the simulator and in the car to do dynamic obstacle avoidance and overtaking over here. Uh, there are a variety of different planning algorithms that are introduced within the context of uh, racing. And uh, so this really expands the student's knowledge to more robotics concepts. And then we also introduce uh, mo model predictive control, where you know with a receding horizon, the vehicle can plan its strategy and, it, and generate trajectories so that it can both be safe and aggressive as it is driving along over here. So this allows for overtaking strategies and students learn to implement that you know, in their code. Then they learn about racing strategies in terms of race line optimization. What are the fastest parts? How can we generate these you know, automatically? And then once you have the fastest parts, how do you actually figure out what are the fastest speeds along the fastest parts if you were the only racer? So how do you come up with the best racing strategy in that case? And once you have that running in the simulator, realize that for real in you know, the actual racing environment. And here you can see this vehicle has scanned the environment before. We have optimized it in the simulator. And now it is running the fastest lap that it could do uh, within this environment. So then we switch to more you know, machine learning and computer vision topics in you know, the final module. And where, for example, we want to sort of first start with classic computer vision in terms of understanding a camera model, single view geometry, homography, detecting features, and doing predictions, where you know, we want to detect April tags and then use that to pursue vehicles and generate trajectories for overtaking. Then we switch to more you know, uh, learning-based approaches that can do object detection and, uh, and uh, using neural network uh, approaches and you want to realize this you know in fast pipelines on the Jetson. And then you know there are more interesting topics in terms of you know imitation learning or end-to-end -end driving here where you basically teach the vehicle you know to, uh, to to drive just like a competent driver would drive or you teach the vehicle to drive with a you do the training with a lidar and a camera and then you remove the lidar and it just does camera based navigation. Here's an example of you know, imitation learning where you drive the vehicle for a couple of minutes, and then it learns to mimic you and can drive as well or as poorly as you drive. And this is using reinforcement learning, and this is used also as a project option at the end of the course. As part of the Grand Prix now, students are free to explore you know, research ideas in teams of three students, and they can do you know, control-related things, uh, uh, reinforcement learning ratings or using vision-based algorithms on how they want to actually build you know, the best racing vehicle for the final Grand Prix. And these are examples of projects that students have done you know, related to drifting <coughs> and so on. And in the final race, it's extremely aggressive and really thrilling because now you have multiple vehicles here. This is a vehicle that is trying to overtake the vehicle in front and you know and the, the teams are you know really really uh, aggressive and it's a it's a very challenging sort of system to get working at the same time but it's really fun because there are no hang ups with the basic code or the hardware and the platform and it's really you're focusing on you know just your racing uh, av stack and your racing strategy over here oh. and over the past you know a few uh, months, we've developed ways to now, you know, uh, go from you know simulations of you know doing uh, multi-vehicle racing to uh, real vehicle racing in a much more seamless manner here, where you can actually simulate 
other kind of agents and come up with racing strategies to overtake them and then try that out for real. And so in the final chapter of what we are trying to achieve here is also we want to push the limits of doing autonomous systems research. And the great thing about F110 is that they are 100 times cheaper than a real autonomous vehicle. And there is no risk of safety or ethical violations in running that. And you can actually have fleets of these vehicles. I'm just going to quickly give you two examples of type of research that we have done. In the past year, uh, we've had you know, quite a few papers, not just from our team, but from the community at you know, ICML for machine learning and optimization, ICRA for robotics, uh, NeurIPS and PMLR uh, for reinforcement learning running on the F110 platform, uh, and also education, pushing the limits of education over here in the computer science uh, uh, special um, interest group for computer science education. And so one example is you know, what we call Formula Zero, and this was part of our ICML paper, where we look at distributionally robust online adaptation of these vehicles, but with offline population synthesis. So what that really means is that looking at the AV stack and you know, where you are really, uh, when you are racing, you're trying to figure out what kind of driving policy is your opponent you know, using. And, uh, and so essentially you want to figure out if, if you, if you, uh, what is the strategy your opponent is using. And if you can start to get a better understanding of that, then you can synthesize now you know, a, a more efficient and a more aggressive control strategy for overtaking that vehicle. But in order to come up with you know, different strategies, we use a population synthesis approach over here and uh, where it uses techniques like self-play to generate competitive agents. And uh, so we are really generating a cohort of you know, different driving policies that are, also, that are very diverse and that are also very competitive over here. And now using this approach, as we start to you know, estimate and get better estimates with low, uh, with low ambiguity or uncertainty on how the other drivers are driving, we can have a more confident and a more aggressive control strategy to overtake the other vehicles. And, and so this is a way of really balancing safety and performance and moving that balancing point dynamically through the context of the race and where the agents are incredibly smart, they're interactive, they're reactive, and they are adapting to how you are adapting like that, right? So, and so we not only realize this algorithmically, but we also realize this for real in our agents over here where we have uh, generated, you know, a whole set of populations of how these agents, uh, other uh, opponents could drive. And now we are, sort of guessing in on uh, very efficiently in an online manner what kind of driving policy our lead agent has and then trying to come up with very aggressive strategies to overtake that um, a second kind of research uh, work that was conducted was at uh, ICRA this year and where the paper was called tuna car and was basically a super optimization tool chain for autonomous racing and here the goal is really to say, well, you have mapping, localization, model predictive control, and your basically vehicle planning and control stack. But how can you come up with the best racer given the environment and the vehicle hardware? How can you sort of optimize your approach of you know, what is in the middle in terms of planning and control for different environments and for different vehicle models and makes and, and, and mechanical constraints that you have there? And so essentially, we want to do this for, you know, that given just a single shot of seeing what the racetrack is like, automatically now optimize from, you know, the, the mechanical properties, figure out a parametric optimization of, say, the moment of inertia, center of gravity, and so on, on the mechanical properties of the vehicle, and then come up with the best racing parts. And for every one of the best racing parts, we also want to figure out what are the optimal speeds that we want to do as. And, and in addition, we also want to optimize our model predictive control and planning strategy 
to figure out what is the best you know parameters to use for that so you can think of this as you know a multi stage heterogeneous kind of optimization pipeline and where we kind of use uh, build a compiler tool chain to come up with the best strategies over here as we go through each of these stages and at the end of this what it generates is the fastest racing car for a single vehicle strategy in this case and uh, and we can then automatically generate this you know within a, a, a few minutes and come up with the best strategy and then realize that strategy for real as i showed you uh, before oh, where is f110 going now right f110 has started to interface with you know the indy autonomous racing challenge and working together with the sae um, and you know the autoware foundation so that we can have autoware run on f110 and have things within f110 be portable to autoware and to real vehicles because what you really want to figure out is how do i spend my testing dollars how can f110 help me in prototyping evaluating and testing my code before i go to a full scale vehicle uh, similarly we are collaborating with the dot and the federal highway administration as part of their karma uh, platform where they have a fleet of you know uh, 12 autonomous vehicles as autonomous cars and autonomous trucks but they are using f110 for rapid prototyping and for testing and training their engineers before they put this on the road they also want to now have this as fleets of say 10 to 20 of these vehicles working together for cooperative driving automation and to work and and comply with the SAE 3216 standard for cooperative driving automation of collaborative perception collaborative planning and control so the question i have for you now is well i hope you had fun and i hope you are excited in becoming you know the best autonomous driver just come to our website at f110.org and we will be happy to help you get started thank you and i'll be happy to take any questions that you have